Welcome to the Landscapers Academy. This is today's video. I'm going to show you step by step, narrated through the entire video, how to make this exact landscape plan inch by inch, plant by plant, piece by piece. Uh, it also walks you through how to model the house and all the thought processes behind how we designed this and why I designed it the way I did for this client. Uh, it also shows you how to make this exact video how to make the 2D plan with plant lists and everything involved. So I opened Real Time Landscape Architect 2020 by Idea Spectrum. And what we're going to do is I'll minimize this window and I'll show you. Uh, I did have the customer email me a site plan to their house and it shows all the dimensions that I'm going to need. Uh, you could just measure the dimensions in person if you don't have this type of site plan. Uh, if it's an existing home, a lot of times I will basically measure in person. I'll measure the side yards. If I'm just doing the backyard like this one, I'll measure the side yards. I'll measure how big the patio opening is. I'll measure the whole yard and again the side yard. And I'll get basically every little dimension back here so I can label it all in this program and enter all that info. But uh, this site plan really helps out uh, more than you could imagine. So if you can get a site plan from a client, this is the way to go. Uh, you can also import one from Google Maps and that will work, but it will need to be, if you're wanting it to be really exact and really accurate, then you'll need to uh, get some measurements on site or, or even have the client do it. I've had a few clients send me that uh, via internet if they are out of state because I've done some out of state designs as well. So let's erase this and open this in full screen. So first of all we're going to go to tools and we'll put in CAD drawing import wizard and basically what this just means is that we're importing a PDF um, that is kind of CAD style. It doesn't have to be made by CAD but any PDF filed document will open up in this program. So we'll do that. We'll go next and we'll scroll down here into the site plan which is the one I just showed you. It'll show me a preview, we'll hit next and boom we're done. What I do is I, I drag this corner I click the corner drag it out to where it's just big that way I can see it and I do have a mouse separate from my laptop and um, what I can do here is I can use the wheel on my mouse if I roll it up it zooms me out if I roll it towards myself uh, or downward it zooms in so out in out in um, that wheel if I click that wheel um, if I if I left click it lets me select things I can select and drag things or I can select things independently with my left clicker uh, with my right clicker I can do an array of other things and I'll walk you through that as we go but one of the other useful points on this mouse is clicking the wheel down um, not rotating the wheel down but actually just clicking it down with your finger as if it was a clicker uh, when that happens that allows you to theoretically grab this platform and drag it over so you can zoom in a lot and then drag wherever you want to see so you'll see me do a ton of this dragging motion throughout this entire build which should uh, help you guys navigate through this quite a lot um, because this program is uh, on these these linear patterns here, I find it easier if I can make this uh, site plan mimic the lines of this program. Um, I'm gonna when you zoom out, there's a little dot up here, and when you scroll your mouse over it, it shows your rotational design and what happens is we can click on that and rotate this and see it in real time and make sure that we're pretty close to square with these lines already on the screen a little more to the right and I'm going to drop it right there we'll zoom in it looks like it's pretty close to these it's pretty close to the horizontal lines too so I'm going to roll with it um, next up we need to we just drag this big so we can see it better and what we're doing here is basically 
needing to first before we do anything else is resize this PDF using a known distance and luckily on the PDF we have plenty of known distances uh, we know this is 21.83 feet we know this is 40 feet yada 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 so I'm gonna start with these property corners this is usually the easiest way um, I would pick a larger measurement so it's more accurate over a smaller measurement on your plans uh, so let's click resize using known distance I'm gonna click dead center in that circle use my wheel on my mouse clicking it down to scroll over all the way to this other one and we can even zoom in more and be right about there and then we'll enter 40 feet hit OK so now our site plan is to scale um, for simplicity I'm gonna left click and drag this down to where the backyard is mostly centered amongst this uh, I will let this north symbol accurately reflect this so we can use that later on that way we have that pretty accurate so let's jump in I typically start with modeling the house when we have a covered patio like this I model the whole house without that covered patio and I'll show you why because we are going to model this up into 3d so we're gonna click on building up on the tab on the top left click on house and um, what we can do here is we'll adjust all this stuff to the right later uh, I'm going to just for kick start on this corner click and I'm going to start what I'm gonna do is come up a little bit shy and if you hold down the shift key it'll make sure that this line no matter what you do stays linear with the plan so I'm gonna wait till it falls in line with that 90 degree and I'm gonna left click while holding the shift key you'll see it stays perpendicular there's a little little nubbit up there that says perpendicular so we're gonna drag it over here to click and I like staying within these lines instead of actually going exactly with the house and I'll show you why we'll go over here click like so and I am holding down the shift key so as I get towards here it'll auto populate that this is a 90 degree angle so I can click here go across since I'm only doing the backyard the front doesn't matter I'm not worried about the front only the back you can see I'm shy in these lines but at least I have a truly square home here um, I'm going to go over here to the right scroll down click edit points and zoom in I'm gonna grab I'm gonna click this line so it only grabs this top point and this bottom point and I'm gonna drag these over while holding the shift key right toward my line is perfect right in the area and I'm gonna drop it then I'm gonna go down here click this area so it's getting these two pins and I'm going to drop it right there so now we have the house and that's set so uh, I'm gonna click down here in the bottom left perspective and that is what we have I'm holding down the right button on the mouse to and moving the mouse ever so gently to pan over and view things now we can zoom in using the rotational wheel on the mouse and um, here's what we have so what I'm gonna do is this house has uh, currently has two different pitches and the house in real life has this covered patio covered with the whole thing being a pitch at once so I'm going to click out of the edit points little issue because it won't let me edit more um, very well until I edit points or it won't let me at least edit other things until I unclick the edit points so I'm gonna make the roof pitch go from 35 degrees all the way to zero and I'm going to take off this button that takes off the corner trim and the house let me look at my phone since I do have pictures of it uh, the house is a very light tan color so and it is stucco so I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna find a light tan stucco uh, it does look almost a gray
I'm gonna say it's like this color. So that's wall 183. Okay. So I'm back to the 2D plan, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the house is selected. I'm going to go Control, Copy, then Control V, which is Paste, and I'm going to drag this house right on top, literally on top of that area. And I'm going to edit it in real life so you can see what we're doing from there. Um, or edit it in 3D mostly so we can see what we're doing from there. Uh, I will scroll down, and I'm going to edit points and we're going to take this pin and actually drag it all the way up to this corner. So now, <coughs> this is what we're left with. And what we're going to want to do is go over here to wall height and we're going to, instead of do 10, enter 0. And elevation, instead of 0, we're going to enter 10. Hit enter. So that put basically a house upon a house. And what we're going to do is add some roof pitch in. And you can see now we have a house with a pattern with a covered patio. That's what we're wanting. Uh, the pitch on this particular house is a little bit more. It's like so. And I do like the overhang that it has. Uh, I'm gonna leave that alone mostly and I think 22 degrees is perfect but that way you have a covered patio um, we might make it one inch tall you can see if, if it's zero I can see an odd little corner in there so I'm gonna instead make it one inch tall and that way everything looks kosher just like so um, while I'm here I'm gonna look at the roof coloring Luckily, the roof coloring looks pretty much identical to what is uh, listed on this plan. It may be a little more brown, so I'm going to go up, see what we got here. I'm going to choose a slightly more brown one, just like so. Uh, the coloring on the trim is kind of a light tan-ish color. So I'm going to make it something like this so it matches a little bit better and then let's bump back down to the plan view so we can do a little bit more details um, I'm going to grab the original house that we made and I'm gonna copy and paste that so now we have this new one I'm gonna make a column out of this one so I'm gonna scroll down and click shape options and load shape then we're going to grab a square and zoom in. The square I'm going to drag until it's quite small. I'm going to drag it away from the house and to see how big the square is I'm going to click this edit points button. I did want one foot by one foot. It's funny that that just kind of happened like that. So uh, we're going to drag this to where it fits right in this corner because this house does have a post that's holding up this corner. Um, she does have some existing concrete, so we're going to go up here under this building tab, scroll over to patio. I like to make sure that it's listed as gray concrete because this is what this patio is. And you can click all four of these corners. And notice that this little uh, angular curve type is on for me doing a square patio versus the, the curved one. So we're going to hit here to finish off and go back to the perspective view and you're going to see now we have a patio uh, floor. Uh, the, her floor does not have a brick border like that so I'm going to scroll down until the border instead of being flat to be none. And there we have it. Uh, while I am here, I also wanted to add one quick other detail of the home. The home has an awkward pillar right here as well. I'm not sure why. I've never had a home have that, but just so she recognizes the home better, I'm gonna put that there and play around with it in perspective view. 
Okay, it's still under the overhang and that's what I wanted. Okay, uh, we do have a window over here. So I'm gonna go click window and drag it over to the house and just click somewhere. I'm gonna go up to our styles and just select window 43B, which is just a nice big square window. And that window I'm scrolling with the with the right mouse uh, clicking button. That window looks a little small. It is actually about that size. I'm going to drag it a little bigger, drag it over more, and I'm going to raise the elevation on it just a little. And then we're going to add a door as well. Um, I'm going to drag and drop a door there you can see I do have a favorite door that I use for back patios and we'll drag that just to be centered amongst there a little bit too. Um, I can edit the look of the store by edi editing materials and finding which material I want to edit. I do want to take this wood and make this wood look more like a composite or a wood material. That way it blends in with the house better. Um, I will copy and paste this window and drag it over here because the house does have a very small window that is very small and wide uh, I'm going to shrink it down bump it up right about here and raise the elevation almost all the way I'm guessing there's a shower in there that brings in light um, I'm going to see which other windows on my phone are on the pictures. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this one. We're going to drag it over here. We're going to use this smaller little window, turn down the elevation a little bit. She does have a couple windows back here. Not that this is going to matter a ton, but I'd rather show her a little bit more of an accurate representation for her. Okay. Um, as for the house, that part's pretty much done. You can, while we're in the stage, it's nice for me to show you if you click on the home, at least the home portion that has the roof on it, you can click this little nice little nifty tool here that calls for an edit roof type and if you scroll over the roof you can see near the line it gives you a plus or minus if you click on that uh, that's what's letting it change the way the roof operates uh, why is it not working There we go. So if the house were pitched like that, that's how you do it. Um, in this case, the house is pitched the opposite way, so we're going to leave it the way it was. But I wanted to show you that in case you need to do something to model a house. Uh, I use this technique of modeling pretty much every house to where I'm literally just stacking homes on top of homes and modeling it each piece as we go upward from there. So this is a real simple basic home and I think it's going to be perfect for this instructional video today. Um, let's jump into the plan view again. She does have an air conditioning unit right here, so I'm going to go into landscape, and it's called an accessory. It's giving us a bridge as an option, but I'm going to go into favorites because I already have an air conditioning unit on hold um, in my favorites. Uh, you can search air conditioner 2, and I'll do that so you can find it again. Just type in air conditioner, and there you go. So double click on that, and we're going to drop this in. Uh, I need this to be square, like the AC is in person. 
uh, it's not rectangular like this. So what I will do is I'll unclick this scale evenly because even if I move this width which I need down, the whole thing gets smaller. So I'm going to unclick this and make this width 3 feet. That way we have a square and this sits right about there. So now I have a home with an air conditioning unit with a patio with doors and windows and it's the color of the real home in person. So let's jump back out to plan view and let's add a perimeter wall or a perimeter fence depending on where you live. Uh, where I live we always use walls just because fences don't last as long in my area. Uh, let's see, so we're going to go to building and retaining wall. Before we start I'm going to make sure the wall width is 8 inches and not a foot because only huge walls are a foot thick, at least where I'm from. And let's do a wall material. Her walls are actually brown so I'm going to go to favorites and click that brown unit. Uh, she does not have a cap on her wall, so I'm going to say no cap. We can start from way back here. I'm going to click on this line, drag all the way up. Let's hold down the shift button so we know we're keeping our square measurement and click. We'll zoom out, scroll over, zoom in. See, the program's wanting me to jump up here, but if I click the shift button it drags me right in here and it knows exactly what is going to stay true to square. So we're going to click on that. Oh, it didn't let me. There, click, zoom out, scroll all the way down here. We'll find out what's equal and holding down shift we're going to hit the right clicking button to finish the wall. There's a wall. You can see these two corners here are rounded and we don't want that obviously we want a straight corner so we're going to go over here click edit points we're going to select these two points you can also select all if there's more points and instead of going from a curved point we go to an angular point which is a line point here and in one swift motion that makes the wall basically uh, square right angles like this which is great so let's go to perspective that looks true to size um, as far as the height and the look of the wall I think everything in here is ideal um, let's see I do know that about six feet from where this patio ends this way there is a fence uh, so I'm gonna go into plan detail and I'm gonna do a linear dimension and I'm going to click on this wall here and go about six foot in and scoot on over right. We'll go this way so it's out of the way. Let's zoom in. We're going to go back to building and put a fence panel up that's right in line with that. I'm going to hold down the shift button so it's square and click the right click. So now we have a fence. Uh, her fence is a slightly different style, so I'm going to go over here and make it look like so. And I'm going to adjust the height downward a little bit. Uh, I'm going to edit the points, grab this one, hold shift, and drag it to the edge. That way we have a, uh, a bar at the stucco and a bar at the fence here, so it's more realistic. Unclick the edit points. Let's go back to 2D and we're going to click on our linear dimension and hit the delete button on our keyboard to delete it. Um, this I'm going to copy and paste it. I know that this fence, I'm going to literally lay it over the existing fence, grab it, hold down shift, and drag all the way over so at least it's matching on this side as well. Let's look in perspective view and see how this one came out. Looks perfect. I know the windows aren't like that, so I'm going to drag one window over here just for good measure. So now you can tell we have a, a pretty well-modeled home that looks pretty much true to size. Okay, so let's jump into the design part of this now because the house is pretty much as modeled as it's going to get. Again, I'm clicking on the right clicker on the wheel and dragging the mouse a little bit through to pan things in the direction I want. 
So let's start with a 2D view and I'll walk you through what she's wanting. Uh, while you're on site with a client, it's important to see if you can get some info out of them as far as what they're wanting. So this individual let me know that she wants uh, lots of curves instead of anything else for the yard. Um, anything else being linear. So she prefers curves. Uh, she does want this entire area over here to be concrete so her dog doesn't escape, dig under this fence and escape. And she does think this patio is not big enough. So she wants this patio extended a little bit which I think is always a great option. Um, I'm going to start at the patio because the patio will tell us a lot of what the rest of the yard wants. She also has really good views in um, this direction leading that way, basically northward, so um, just like so. She has good directions in this north view. So she does want a deck over here towards this existing back wall so she can sit there with a drink and look over and enjoy the view for the rest of her stay at this home. Let's delete this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get a circle tool and go in here and click and drag all the way out till it's about like that big and right click. I'm going to drag it over and that'll show me at least what it would look like if it was a circle. So I'm going to edit some points. This point I'm going to drag inward a little bit. And to me it looks nice if it's somewhat, somewhat of a semicircle. So I'm going to roll with that. Let's uh, unclick edit points and click delete. So we can delete that whole thing. Let's go back to building, go to patio. And I'm going to actually want to drop a point right on this corner here. And I'm going to drop it equidistant over here to the side. And I'll hold down shift and zoom in while doing so. I'll go a little past into the middle of the wall, click left and I'm going to click on this gate threshold right here, click again, and I'm going to click this corner and all the way back out. So now we have an awkward looking patio, but I don't want a border type, we'll say none, and I'm going to edit all these points. Uh, this point is good, these points are good. This one, I'm going to want to push this far right one that has a, a bezier corner and it basically just means you can adjust each corner as you go. So this corner I'm going to make in line with the wall and this one I'm going to do a bezier, bezier, whatever corner and you just got to grab one of these and choose where which direction it goes. This one will go in line with the patio and this one stays in line with the wall. Now to make our patio extension look correct we're going to drag these points at a about a 45 degree angle. You can go out here if you prefer, but you'll see I I like to play around with the angles I do. Actually 45 would not be good. So we're going to leave it kind of like so and see how that looks in a 3D fashion. So now I think that little patio is pretty nice. Uh, it looks a little small to me, so I'm going to make it a little larger jump up here, make this one a little larger too. Um, this looks a little awkward so I'm going to actually drag this up and make this a little bit steeper. And that way it gives her just a little more room near that corner. So I'm going to roll with that. I'm going to leave it and see if she likes the way that is. In the plan view again, I'm going to zoom out and I do know that she wants a deck. So I'm starting with the main items and then I'm going to work on connecting them all and making them all flow. So let's go up here. Uh, it's very rare. I actually do decks, so you're going to have to bear with me and learn as we go. Deck. Okay. Let's go to shape options, load shape. She wants a D shape, so a semicircle. We're going to start with that. We'll double click. We're going to drag this deck up here and rotate the thing 180 degrees and it drags right into place. Um, I know that she wanted the deck right up against her wall 
and I think if we edit points we see that this is about a 16 foot semicircle. That's a pretty good sized deck actually for a couple people. Um, let's uncheck the points. Uh, the elevation, let's see how it looks. So it's two feet high. I think the two feet high for now should be okay. Let's make it one and a half just in case. Um, her deck does not need railings so we'll toggle railings and click no for basically each area of railing and that way we don't have any more railings that are in the way. Let's unclick toggle railings and the board direction I can't say I love the 45 degree I think we should move it to zero degree and that will at least make it go like so uh, instead let's see how 90 degree looks personally I like the 90 degree look from the plan view I think it looks a little more organized uh, you can go into some great detail with that as well her board color I say we just start with gray and just see what happens with a little bit of time um, for the siding material or the framing I think we should make it match I'm gonna double click on that same with the railing posts uh, basically I just go through all over the fascia that's the one I think I'm looking for that did it that made it look really nice um, as far as the fascia goes Um, I guess I'll leave it at the foot mark that it is and we'll work to build up some steps according to that too. So, looks like we have a pretty cool little deck there. Um, just for kicks with measurements, I'm going to go into landscape and accessory and click over here and type in search and I'm going to type in chair. And we'll find a couple chairs just like this chair 29 right here and we're going to drop it on there to see how many chairs we could kind of comfortably fit there to make it look comfortable and to test how this would flow in a real life environment. I'm copying and pasting these chairs so you can tell how many people could sit here. Um, ideally I think I'd like her to be able to sit four people here comfortably and maybe have an area that you could walk around to leave and to come to the area. Uh, it does look pretty good size wise. We may edit that later, we may not. Um, I'm going to leave the chairs there for the time being just to mess around with and see what we could do from there. Now I do think that uh, putting in a pathway is going to be a crucial step for this patio uh, connecting with this deck and let's shoot with trying that for now. So uh, what I'm actually going to do is use the path tool. I do like it being four feet wide. I'm going to move it to being concrete uh, just so it matches. And I'm going to kind of start at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to go click right here in the center with a left click right there and then click uh, let me see I'm gonna go right up here right dead center on this and then hit right click <coughs> so you can see I drew a really ugly walkway but it is four feet wide which would be really comfortable um, for most circumstances so I'm gonna edit these points I want this point and this point different uh, I do know that I need this point over here on the deck and this point over here on the deck and I need to maintain that four foot width. You can see I cannot get that four feet until I zoom in. Let's do the same with this. Four feet. Okay, so now I'm going to highlight all of these points because I want a nice S curve to meander through here. Um, I'm going to go here with this actual curving tool that curves the entire thing. I'm going to move this up. I'm going to bend this one over. This one's going to bend over and pull just like so. You can see 
there's there's probably other ways to do this and more um, reliable ways to do this, but I have found that this ends up working pretty good for me. You can have the, uh, what would you call it? You can have the path tool do a lot of these curves for you, which uh, can be really useful. But for now, um, I like kind of making my own curves happen. And I think if we do that, you can see how nice that walkway came out. So now we have a nice curving walkway to this patio. Um, ooh, um, I did do this path with a path tool. So now it's set as a region, um, which is okay. Let's see, nope. To be honest, I would rather it concrete because you can see this little lip of concrete, how it's not matching up. So instead, uh, what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to save this shape. I'm going to go to shape and click save because I already have this and I don't want to draw it again. You can type, I can type in S curve. So now that saved that exact shape in this platform. So what I'm going to do is go to building, go to patio. It's already for concrete. I'm going to load a shape and it'll be in these custom shapes, S curve. There we go. It entered it right away. I'm going to tell it that it has no border. And um, I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to click again to click on this path that is actually a region. It's like a ground level thing and it's not two inches high like the concrete. I'm going to delete it so it l d gets less clutter out of there. And now you can see how this lines up perfectly seamless without any issues. It just looks better. Um, now you can see we have other awkward area A right here. <laughs> uh, we will fix that with a set of steps. Uh, let's do deck stairs. Um, this one, total width. Let's make this width four feet. And uh, I like it being a little wider actually. Let's make it four foot six or four foot eight and see what that looks like. We're gonna right click. Oh no, so we're gonna left click. And there we go. Um, I do not want a railing on there, so I'm gonna say left right railing no, right railing no, because it's only that high of a deck. Um, once I see the steps, a deck being two feet high is pretty darn high, so I'm gonna move it down to a one foot tall deck. Uh, that has a nice little perfect step on it. I might move it one little bit lower. Okay. Let's click on this step. And we're going to see... We'll leave it auto-calculate. Uh, we'll leave that off. And instead of it being the one foot two, I'm going to make it one foot four. Oh, I see what it's doing. Nope, the auto calculate was best. We'll just leave that on. This I'm going to make the height of it a little lower so it goes all the way down to ground. And we can see that it looks pretty sharp from up here. I'm going to see if there's any other styles that I forget. Add skirting. Nope. Cool. I think we're good. Okay. So I would say we have the two main features in the yard and we connected the two. So that's going to be all set and ready for her enjoyment. Um, the sun in the summer, she does want some enjoyable shade for her dogs on some turf. 
So when we're thinking this through, we're going to go into landscape and add a tree. Uh, we're going to go landscape, plant. Uh, let's add a tree. I'm going to go into pictures because I like the picture look more than the models or the ultra res models. And you can go into tree and pick the tree of your choice uh, based on your area. Uh, I already have favorites lined up here in the favorites column, which really saves you time. That's one of the biggest time hacks within this program. Uh, we'll scroll down and I'm just going to put in this white ash and we will plug that in later just to we'll, we'll edit the variety later most likely but on a 2d view you can see that I have this as a CAD tree and if we put this tree out here this neighbor is not going to have a view out here so I'm going to be a little considerate of the neighbor and we're going to pump this tree a little bit closer like so right about there I think that would do just fine um, speaking of while we're in this view we don't need this uh, site plan anymore so we can click on it and actually hit delete and that's gone um, now it cleaned up our plan it's starting to look like a nice little landscape plan um, these two chairs I'm gonna move over and rotate ever so slightly these two chairs I'm gonna do the same with they don't they look fine rotationally wise you will see that these chairs although they have the view and this wall now that I'm looking at it should be we'll say four feet high just so she can see that they'll see over it um, I think they're going to need a, a place to rest their drinks upon so we're gonna go into landscape and accessory and go into here and search fire pit enter we'll just search the word fire and now we have all these beautiful little fire pits um, I am going to scroll down I think a round fire pit would look pretty nice especially on the semicircle I believe we could do this one uh, fire pit 45 I'll double click it and we can set that right in the middle there and watch how much better it already looks uh, you can see it looks tall so I'm going to drop the elevation down I'm going to make it a touch wider uh, it definitely does not match so what I'm going to do is go in here and say edit materials uh, material 1 is fine material 2 I don't like the red gravel honestly I would rather maybe the smoky gravel 239 I'm going to go into gravel 3 and change out this rock for something over here on El Dorado stone, maybe an alder wood. And other here, 4, I'm going to change the granite <coughs> to being something maybe lighter. Um, let's see. I think this rock 111 would look nice, or this rock 116 click OK. Uh, I like the stack stone. I don't like the countertop. So for the countertop, I'm going to go in here and actually make it the original, but I'm going to edit the brightness on it and bring it all the way dark so it looks nearly black. Um, contrast, I'm going to pull The saturation is what I'm wanting. I don't want that red in there. I want to make it gray. So I'm going to click OK. And let's see what it looks like. I think that's going to be a much better fire pit for that area. It's a little tall. I'm going to taper that down. A little low. I'm going to taper it up. We'll leave it. Um, and see what that has to do. See if she likes it. Uh, always save your work intermittently. We're going to hit save. Uh, we're going to label this job's name as Karen. Okay. Let's go back to 2D view. She does want a lawn, a synthetic lawn on each side of this grass. Uh, so I'm going to go in here, click region, and we're going to click grass and pick a maybe a darker colored grass like this grass 54. 
and get creative with it. Um, it looks like if I were to be creative, I would probably do a shape like this to here, to here. Okay, so I have this awkward shaped lawn. I'm gonna edit these points. Uh, I think all of them, I'm going to make at least this one as a starting point. I'm going to bend this one out big time so it at least makes more of a, uh, more of an impact. Um, these we can move in so we just don't have wasted space. Not like it matters though. Um, this one, I'm going to just make a hard corner. This one, I'm going to adjust each of these pins. I'm wanting this tree to basically wrap around this lawn area like so. See how this looks from a 3D view. Hmm. If I'm being honest, something looks a little funky about this. So I'm going to try some other things. I'm going to delete this tab. I'm going to delete these other two. And instead, I'm going to make this bump out. I'm going to erase this one. And I'm going to drag this out to where um, what I'm going to do to see these lines better is go up here and click normal and move it to sharp and that sharpened up the edge. Um, This is just part of the design process, making this happen slowly to where it all looks like it was done at the right time for the right reasons. So she wanted turf on both sides of her walkway and one of those things I'm trying to see how it works out. Okay, I uh, took a quick water break and looked at this plan and I gotta say I'm not really digging how that lawn was looking. So back to the drawing board, I went. Um, I'm gonna minimize this and show you my thoughts on what I was going to do. Um, basically, I'm going to move this tree here so the tree is about right here. There you go. Got that. Uh, let's move this to green for the lawn. 
I'm going to make the lawn shape come out here so it's it's here theoretically greeting her and it curves into here so the lawn will pretty much be like this like a nice little s curve uh, the lawn will also come in here s curve like so and then it'll come and swoop across so all this will be lawn or synthetic lawn for her Uh, she will also have a border that basically enters about here and curves in and then goes all the way across and slowly kind of tapers like so. Okay. Um, she does want to border across here with different plantings. It'll kind of give her some differences in elevations and look better overall. So that's our goal. Let's uh, let's see if we can make it happen because I like the deck location. Uh, the tree is iffy. It wasn't working with the other layouts of the lawn. It just looked a little funny to me. It didn't flow. It didn't have enough s total square feet of one entire lawn for her little dog to use the restroom correctly or for kiddos to play on. It was just a little bit too many chopped up pieces like this one. So um, let's dive in and see if we can make that happen. Okay, let's do in plan view. I do a lot of my designing in plan view because that's kind of just how my background was. Um, let's put it here a little further back like so. We'll make it go a little smaller too, just so it shows her uh, region. Let's do lawn like it is. Border, we're going to do sharp. Let's do a click right about here. And let's put one here in the middle and one up here. And we can move to right about there. We'll put one here in the middle too. We'll drag one right here and one directly in the center and boom and boom. Uh, I already like where this is going. I'm going to make all these a bendable fun little type of angle here. Oh, undo that. Grab this one guy. Move it back out. This one I'm actually going to make flat, turn this in so that she has at least a nice little transitional space to, to make this kind of match the deck is the goal. It's okay if it moves a little. This one uh, needs to be the same. I'm going to move this and hit that shift key and make it squared off. I'm going to match it to the line. I'm going to drop it like it's hot down here. Push this up, twist this so it's a nice S curve. Um, just like so. I think I do need to push this over. and pull this out just a hair. I'm gonna drag that and pull that over. So I think that's a pretty cool lawn space, especially when we add all the borders in. We'll give it a shot. Um, I do think this needs to come out a little bit, give us a little more interest. And I do think we might have to add well, let's edit that point and see. I like it being bigger.
I'm pretty happy with that. So let's see how it looks in perspective. That looks cool. If she's chilling on the deck, she has a pretty cool looking little lawn as this cuts across. She loves the curves. Uh, the curves are kind of what I think she was mostly after, especially after talking to her. So I'm going to work with this and see what we could do. Let me adjust my notes here. Okay. As for this border, let's see what we could do. Um, let's try a stone edging and see if there's any cute ones. Uh, there are. There are some nice ones here. I'll be honest, I don't use a ton of stone edging. So it's one of those things that's a little new to me. She requested specially for this. I'm going to use this keystone block and move here and I'm going to hold down shift to make a 45 and click on this angle, drag over here to a 45, click on this, I'm going to click here and drag to a 45 and right click. Uh, I am going to switch sides. Oh, let's edit these points. This one is a right angle for sure. This one I'm going to edit to be right angle like so. A lot of this guys is just experimenting just tons of trial and error to see what matches up, what doesn't. And that's the best way I could basically. Make this happen. I'm going to move it to two rows. I'm going to make the height of each one a little smaller so it's at least like that edit these materials I'm gonna make it will this smooth block look okay yeah um, I think that looks okay These two points, I'm going to edit and pull outward so we have a little more planting room. Uh, this one I need to pull out so it's straight. And I like what we have going here. Um, I may, for an aesthetic standpoint, move these two points, hold down shift, move it over like so. Let's see if it looks better. No. I think I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, I'm going to edit this and make it a little bit darker because they are in real life. I'm going to uncheck square e scale, scale evenly and adjust the height a little bit to see what alters things. Okay. 
let's make this a bed. And by bed, what I'm going to do is go to building, go to patio, and I'm literally going to kind of trace the middle of this bed. And click here into the middle of the perimeter wall and finish. Uh, let's see if this works. This works with planters. Whoa, it does not work with these garden blocks very well. Let's try something else. Um, I'm going to make this a soil. Take off the border so I can th see things better. And... Whoa, yeah, real sensitive to real sensitive. Okay, I'm going to move the elevation up on this and see if it'll let me do something to where it looks nice. Wow, it's going to be tricky. Um, oh, aligned flat using lowest point. That's how we do it. I knew there'd be a way. Let's try now. Yep, now it doesn't mess it up. Glad we figured that out. That way we can get this going here. Okay, now we have a planter raised with dirt. That's how it should look. Cool, very cool. Let's save our work. We're gonna save it as Karen. Okay, I'm digging the tree area, I'm digging the patio, I'm digging the raised bed, I'm digging this. Uh, this I did want to show you with plants, what I would do, I'm going to go into landscape and plant row, and I'm going to click kind of the center of this area, hit the backspace right about there, hit right click hit backspace and I'm going to finish my line right about there right click I'm going to move this number down to five it might go down to three in landscaping design we try and use odds uh, as with any other design and let's just for fun see if we plug us English lavender what it looks like it's starting to look cool but we can definitely do better <coughs> let's move it to these lavenders it looks too compact so let's do three um, we can move the starting age downward so it looks nicer like that. I think uh, we might go with a grass actually. She really likes different grasses. And I'm going to search down a grass that looks like the one that she has in mind. Uh, it looks like this one pretty much. Uh, not so much. Let's see if there's a better one I could pick. Dear grass, one point seven five. I'm going to shrink these in just a hair, move it upward, okay. 
Okay, so now let's think about her neighbors. She does have a house right here and a patio right here with neighbors. So we're going to add a planting row. We'll say about here. Hold down shift to remain straight to here. Right click. I'm going to put three of these plants in. Um, we're going to go to pictures and we're going to type an emerald and it's an emerald green arborvita that we're going to put right there. Um, I'm actually going to move one of these points down just a little bit. There we go. That way she has a little bit of coverage from her and her neighbors right here. Um, I think that's going to be best. We could shrink it down a little just to offer a little bit more compact coverage because these get a little larger as time goes on. So just so I can see this better, I'm going to go to the plan view and I'm going to drop in a region underneath all of this. Edit points, select all these points, make them all right angles so they match up. Let's put this as a, we'll do stone 289 for now. And you can see what we did is we covered our lawn. So we're going to edit points. We're going to right click on this gravel and click render order or hover over render order and click bring to back. And that brought our lawn back up pretty cool. So now it's looking like a yard, which I'm looking and I'm a liking. Okay. Uh, another thing I'm seeing is that we have all this wall space and we know it's going to be shady. So I'm going to put a plant or two there that I know uh, loves the shade. So we'll go into our favorite list of plants. Uh, I would bring your laptop or bring a phone call into the conversation to call some of your nursery or maybe you're experienced enough to know local plants but I um, I would get an array of plants in your favorites and understand those plants really well and why to use them and how to use them so um, they succeed and they help make this plan easier instead of thinking exactly which plant out of thousands of plants would be best it's nice to have a good selection of, let's say, let's call it 100 plants that are used most commonly for you and your area. Um, let's search. I'm going to try putting in a lilac there because I think a lilac will do really well. Um, we will do this lilac tree form here. I think that would serve that wall really well. Okay. I'm going to, again, continue with my row of three plants. One, two, three, right here. Uh, let's make it three. So that way these plants and these plants match. Hopefully. Something like that, right? What's nice is you can go to currently used plants and find what you currently have. And hopefully that should take care of everything. Um, let's click this. I want to edit this to be a little more towards the stair and centered in there. Um, I think you can see how nice this is looking as she were to go forward and move from here. So uh, she does like the curves. So I'm thinking if we start a curve kind of around this area and blend it in somehow, some way, it's going to open up a nice little planting bed and also save her some money with incorporating some um, gray gravels versus these tan gravels, which are a little bit pricier. Edit points. Uh, these ones will be right angles. This one will be this guy. I'm going to pull this down to be in line with the wall. 
And this one, I'm going to drag over this one. We're going to drag this over. We'll go to favorites and I'm going to plug in this gravel so she can see what that looks like. I will add a border so she can see what a border will look like. Uh, the width will be one inch and I'm going to make this border extremely dark so she sees it better. You can see it's already starting to take shape better. Better and better. I'm going to split the distance between the AC and the lilac and pull this out a little bit more. I'm going to play with these dimensions. I do like some plants underneath this tree as well. I'll put three of them in here. These little yards are usually pretty easy. Um, let's go with something that will kind of give her some nice little fun activity under there. Um... These barberries might work okay. I think these heavenly bamboos would be nice, in all honesty, because they're going to be evergreen for her and have some red colors too. We'll try them and see how that works. Okay. Um... I believe what I'm going to do is go to 2D view and to make this side of the yard, this left side of the yard, match the right side of the yard. Um, I'm going to Probably steal this retaining wall here. Copy paste, drag it over here. Edit these points. I'm going to see what we could do. Drag the whole thing up and over. I'm actually going to click on this retaining wall, drop a point in right here, dra drag this one over. I like this, but I'm going to even drag it further. And I'm going to mess with these plants a little bit too. I'm going to shrink these down, which will open up that corner for me and we'll put something fun in that corner maybe. I'm going to move this down, go to 2D view, click on the wall 
edit points. I'm going to drag this down even further. actually going to drag these points outward uh, not so much maybe like so just so it's an actually a, a pretty good sized retaining wall um, this one doesn't need to be high so I'm just going to make this one layer but at least it'll match all her other stuff uh, I don't want this border impeding on things, so I'm going to move this border. Oh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to just leave that and take the border off. I'll add a border later on. Um, I'll own a stone border. I'm going to change it to be this guy. And I'll make this one just basically like a border that was there. And that way it doesn't get bumped and shoved up on top of this retaining wall when we're all said and done. Uh, see how it has an awkward shadow though? I'm going to click on that border. Keep clicking until you find that border pop up. There it is. Right click, advanced properties, cast shadows and plan view, take that off. There goes that ugly shadow. Uh, region, I'm going to go to building patio because uh, remember we're wanting to raise something. We can't raise a um, we can't raise a region, but we can raise a patio. So that means I'm here I'm trying to get some. of this planter filled. Let's use a favorite, which is just this stone 339. It looks like a nice mulch in there. Uh, I'm going to edit the border. Uh, actually, just take the entire border off. Let's zoom in in 2D and 3D and bump up the elevation on this bad boy a little bit. That way you can see how nice this looks. Um, I think I could move these guys in just a little bit. And I'll probably throw a little rose in the corner here for her, just for color. Uh, the ones we use typically are a double knockout rose. I'm going to tone it down just a hair in height. You can see it looks a little awkward to me at least still. So I'm going to push this down just a little bit. Okay, so for this planter, I'm going to click here that's kind of centered amongst this apex. Hold down, shift, scoot over here, centered, and do the same, and basically end right here and right click. Uh, let's edit points and click this middle point and move it to an angular setting so it fills these nicer. Um, looks like pretty good placement as is. Um, I look for plants nicely in each of the corners, plants, or each of the ends, and a plant nice in, in the corner, too. So if we go down to seven, we have a pretty good lineup 
as far as plants go. Especially if I were to move this one down just a hair. I think we're pretty much in tip top shape. I'll move this forward a little bit. Okay. She doesn't want these yellow flowers though. She would want something else. Um, let's see what we could use. Let's throw in... I know she loves lavender. Uh, the lavender would do perfect on that sun schedule there. For now, I'll leave the lavender. Uh, I think that would be really pretty. We could try going down to five. Yeah, five might work. Um, what I'll do is we'll go with five. And this is just part of the landscape design. You guys have to just plug and play some trial and error factors here. Um, okay, that looks pretty good. And so what we're going to do in place in the meantime is we'll make a new plant row here in the center. Um, we can click here and then end right here. Uh, we have one space, two space, three space, four spaces. So let's do four and see how they space evenly in there. We could put something really cute in there. Uh, really cool. We will go to favorites and Let's try, just for kicks, one of these guys. Pretty cool. Let's make the lavenders a, a hair bigger, 2.4 to 2.9. And these grasses, oh, um, let's make them smaller. I don't think that's going to work too well, so let's try something else that will do well. Um, we could do a hummingbird mint. I think she'd like that. That would go really well with a lavender um, and also bring a lot of fun things into the yard. One point nine. Okay. As for this yard, I think if we put a cute little fence around this, it would look nice too, because she did ask for a fence. So I'm going to go to stone edging and create a really cute little fence here. I've never done this fencing actually, so. Let's adjust this so it tends to match well with everything we're doing. Height, length, two feet. So here's what I'm doing. So you can see on the corners, this doesn't look good because this was at two feet. Um, I'm going to bump it down so this little stretch matches my curve better. Just like so. I think she would like to see a nice little row of flowers here. And what we're going to do is pick a nice little flower annuals. I'm just going to say we'll pick maybe this African daisy one and see how that looks. Uh, we could bump up to 12 and bump the size down 
0.5. I think that would be nice to show her. I'll actually bump the, the settings down on that too. Okay. So now we have this nice little area here to put something. Uh, I think if we put a neat little boulder, I do have favorites. I love this boulder one and this boulder two. I'm going to drag and drop it in there and drag it to size. I'll move it out of the way and I'm going to change it to be a different color, which is rock 47. Um, it doesn't stand out, so I'm going to edit it to be a little darker. Now it stands out. And I'm going to plug a few plants in here. Let's go on to my favorite list. Uh, there's so many plants we could do that are going to be great. Let's try a stone crop and see. No, nope, it's too small. These verbenas do really well in my state. So I'm just going to drop a few verbena here. We'll make the boulder even a little smaller, angle it different to show off. Um, I'm going to angle a verbena here. I'm going to cover this thing with verbena in thirds. So she has some color there. Okay, uh, I will make the width of each one. I'll try making it. Nope, never mind. Uh, I'm good with it. Okay. Wow, let's save our work. Save as Karen. Okay. So now we know what everything is but she may not know. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fancy this up a bit in the 2D form so she can see. Uh, I'm gonna go to plan detail and choose this label and click line style to where it is this solid line, but it's a, let's do a two and we'll click okay. I'm gonna click here and drag up and then right click and I'm gonna say, um, I would say raised a deck, but she used the term elevated deck. So I'm going to copy the term she used for views. Elevated deck for views. Um, we're going to go in here. You can see that the text just overwhelms everything. So we're going to move the height down. And there you go. Um, I like using the landscape text. So you can um, go into the font here, um, right here, font, Arial. I like a text called Flux Architect. You can see it just looks more landscapey. It looks more professional and it's easy to read too. I'm going to cut the size down a little on this. And the way you get this in your computer is you go up here. The way you go in here is you go to your internet, search down Flux Architect Font, and you would go to a place like Da Font, open it up, and there you go. Download this and then install it on the actual computer, and then it will import automatically the same second into this program. That's how you do it. Um, so we have the deck. Uh, I'm going to also label the tree. We can label the tree as well, actually. Let's cancel this. Let's go here. I'm going to make this flux the default for the rest of the time this program's running. And we can say 
tree for shade. And we used uh, one foot four inches for this. So I'm going to make it one foot four inches. Just so it's all congruent. I'm going to copy this and paste it. And I'm going to drag this over. And I'm going to edit our font here. First, I got to see the terminology she used because I like to mimic. Uh, I'm going to say board. She, she wrote border box for flowers and shrubs. Border box for flowers slash shrubs. <coughs> I don't like how that looks, so I'm going to move this. Boom. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move this one to be right. And there we go. So I'm also going to go to text, drop it. I'm going to put flux in here, F-L-U-X. And I'm going to drop a thing that says synthetic lawn. We'll drop that in there. We're going to go one foot. And we're going to make it bright white so it is to be seen. Uh, I will copy and paste this here and put instead concrete extended patio. I'm going to center this one so it matches this. I may even shrink it down just a hair. And drag this over here. I'm going to put, um, let's make it black. I'll say existing. Oh. Existing. Covered patio. That way they know that's there. I'll copy and paste this and say residence. I'm going to copy and paste to drag text onto here, and I'm going to put the word step so she understands that that's a step. Copy, paste, put something here. We're going to say walkway, and I'm going to make it white so it's it's readable, but it's not too bad. Uh, copy paste. I'm going to put this over here. We'll rotate it. Why not? All right. Gravel. Just so she knows what that is. I'm going to copy and paste that. And I'm going to switch this by editing the points and dragging this over there. Okay, that's there. I'm actually going to copy and paste and point out one of these shrubs in general. And I'm going to say ever greens for privacy. That way she knows that I'm thinking through the privacy for her. Uh, I'm going to add plant legends. So we're going to go to plant legend. And it's one simple click. We'll zoom out and we'll drag this down to size right here. 
I'm going to move this north facing area smaller so she can understand that's how north is. For scale, you can also add a little scale measurement here so they know Let's move this to be up and over. I'm also going to add a text that says Landscape plan number one for address here. That way you can enter your own address and let's make this centered and that way everything is titled and adjusted accordingly. Um, if I'm doing a free design, I usually also add something at the bottom. Let's say, let's say these plans or designs, whatever you want to say, are the legal property of your company name. There you go. You could also add that in that way. Someone doesn't jack your design, um, but that's up to you. So I'll erase that because this person paid me for this design um, very for an hour and 40 minutes and I went slow because I was walking things through. I think uh, it's one of those things I made really darn good money doing this. That's the whole reason behind this. If you're not making good money doing this or it's not leading to perfect jobs, uh, why do it? <laughs> so anyways, um, let's zoom in and see. And I'll show you how we do a video format too. Um, I'm trying to find a purple that stands out better. We'll just do this. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I believe that we are pretty well set. I'm going to save this um, as Karen. And what I would do, yes, replace. You can go to save and file or export to plan and you could title it and put it as a PDF. I would save that and send that to her as a 2D plan. But as far as the 3D plan goes, let's jump in and see. Uh, let's look at this thing. I don't want this cutting through the wall. See how you can see it through the wall? I don't want that when I'm looking through the view. So I'll right click on it. Um, hmm. Usually it has a something you can edit, but in this case, I'm just going to move it way out of the way so we don't see it, hopefully. Cool. Okay. I think the best way to show her a video would probably be to go starting here. Swoop through, drag like this, pan over, um, show her what she's working with over here, zoom up, probably get a zoom like this, come around, and then zoom out a little bit and pan all the way across the yard like so. And then probably 
and do something like here and pause it there for a second as a finishing. So let's go through. For this, you're going to go to Utilities and Real-Time Camera. We're going to start it here. Zoom through about right here to here. We're going to come out here. We're going to go over here. Oh, nope. I messed up. Okay, real-time camera. We're coming over here. Boom, boom. Actually hit the backspace. That'll delete the last. Boom, boom. Okay, we're wanting to go here and then over the house just a hair. God, I keep messing up. Okay, I keep clicking the right button on my mouse. Here, 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 then over the house a bit. And then we're going to go high and come kind of swing out here. I'm just clicking how I want this. video to go. And to finish it, I'm going to click this right. The, I want it to finish here, so I'm going to right click here. So now we solidified the path that our camera will go in. And if you click on that path, uh, you can click on the camera and take the, plant, the camera off so the client doesn't see this in the 2D plan, which is nice. But for now, let's edit it. We'll go into Edit Points. And for instance, I know that these locations, at least right here, are going to be at least 12 feet high. I'm going to type in 12 and hit enter. Um, this one I know will be about 12 feet high as well. Well, let's say 10. Enter. I know this one with the tree. That's good. I'm going to put in 12 foot as well for this one. Let's put 10. OK. This one's going to be like 15 feet. So I'm entering different heights just because I know how to do this. So let's start piece by piece. Um, I You can show the little preview. You can see the little preview over here to the side. Uh, I'm going to move this over just a hair. I'm going to push this direction out just a little bit by clicking direction. And I'm going to tilt it downward just a hair. Go back. That's how it's starting. Next piece goes over here. And I'm going to move it back a hair. And move the direction to B a little bit more towards the yard and move the angle down so we're not seeing as much roof and we're seeing more yard. This is the view that she's going to see. It's important because this is the first view that she's going to see of her yard. I'm going to show her a big nice welcome here of her yard like so. And I'm going to just edit every single little piece. I'm going to angle this down a little bit. Scoot this over. I'm going to make this 10 feet. And and this way further down. That way she gets a much better view of what we're doing with the yard. And then this one, she gets to look directly down almost.
basically you go through each view, make sure the camera's oriented in the ideal position for you. You can insert a point. Make sure you like the way that looks. I don't like the corner that hard. So I'm going to put it right here and then drop the view a little bit as far as tilting it. So this goes over there. You can see it's starting to look pretty darn good. So right now we're seeing a lot of green sky, or a lot of green, a lot of sky. And I'm trying to show her the yard she's getting. I think we need to move this to 15 feet and crank this downward. Let's do 14. You'll be able to get a feel for what looks good, what doesn't. It's important to show the client all of these angles from each corner. This will really help them understand what's valuable and help them see the yard as they should. You can see why I raised most of these camera views to go up to this um, 12 foot height. It's usually a necessity. almost done. Once this happens, we let the video render through and then you have a video you can throw into YouTube and impress your client in an incredible way. Let's pump this over. All right, we're getting there. I like this one to end maybe right about so. And I'll show you kind of what I like to do. I like to find a view that I think looks good that encompasses the whole yard. And I'll tell it to sit there for one second. So let's do a walkthrough. Click walkthrough. You can do environment settings. Uh, I don't like nine. I usually do like noon just to see. You can do nighttime when you do landscape lights. And that's going to be a fun part to show you as well. The skyline, we can keep the skyline. I'll bump it down to like a two or a three. Um, season, I do summer typically. 
the walking speed I'm going to do a little faster, the running speed faster. The wind I turn down so there's no wind chime noise. The wildlife, it keeps the bird noise down and the volume I turn all the way down. Um, let's click OK and see it in action. Oh. What I did was a walkthrough, not a video. So we'll go to walkthrough, we'll click real-time camera, camera one, and OK. OK, so we can see it's panning through, going under the covered patio. It shows the blocks. It shows the grass, shows how cool the deck is with the fire pit going. Passes over the lilac, it should raise, and then slowly take us over the house, showing that really cool step, which I probably need to bump over just a hair. Shows us our little privacy wall that we made out of trees with our little fence that she wanted. Pretty cool. Um, if this doesn't impress your clients, I'm not sure quite what will. It will help sell things for you and really will help keep clients coming again and again on referrals. That's the goal. So we'll pan through. We'll let it see what it's going to do. I do think I like this new curving lawn shape. And I think it offers a little bit more space. I think we have a good mix of evergreens, uh, low maintenance plants, and enough plants to keep flowering during the growing season and keeping hummingbirds and bees and everything uh, with birds as well in her yard and active. So uh, that lilac over there also hides her AC pretty nice, which I think is a good bonus. So this will come in through here and it'll show her this nice little view and it'll pause. That's our video. I'll hit the escape key to zoom out of that. And um, before I do anything else, I will hit save. Okay. Now, I'm going to go through walkthrough. Um, well, actually, I wanted to fix this step just a little bit. Sometimes a video will show you what um, does something that looks a little off. There we go. Uh, if that's all that looked off, I think we're doing pretty good. So uh, let's try making a video. We'll do walkthrough, uh, create movie instead. I'll say Karen movie, save. And I do the 1080, I do 20, and I leave it at 30. Camera 1, I already set it in the environment settings, and I'm going to hit OK, and it will render. For now, uh, the render will take, depends on your video, it'll take any, and your computer, it will take anywhere from 15 minutes to 2 hours. And um, I'll hit render now, and then we'll pause this video. See, it's creating and it shows us a breakdown. Uh, this video will only take, looks like about 15 minutes. So I'll pause this and fast forward when it's done. Alrighty, the video just started, or just stopped rendering, it just finished. And this is what finished, uh, this is what the finished product comes up as initially. So it says finished creating the movie. Um, you can close, play, open, or upload to YouTube. I've never clicked upload to YouTube because I upload manually. But uh, I usually just close it, and uh, let's minimize this and find the movie. I'll double click, and let's watch it together. You can see after it renders, it's a much more smooth transition than the live video you can see from the program. When you guys do larger jobs, some of these fly-throughs can be four or five minutes long. Uh, this one's only, what, probably 60 seconds. But this allows you, and especially the homeowner, to see everything about the yard. And there's really no questions after this. From here, it just equals uh, different edits or changes or, or little tweaks that they're looking for instead of 
questions like, oh, I wonder what it'd look like. I wonder how these bushes would look, um, things like that. So this is well above and beyond any 2D plan that you can do. Okay, here we go. Um, also, I have a couple other quick tips for you guys. Uh, let's click on the program and zoom out. You can, um, for instance, save this. Let's export it to file. We'll just put Karen 2D print. I will save it to my desktop in high render quality. Doesn't take that long. But because it is a high render quality, this file is pretty darn large. Um, we'll open it and I'll show you what I'm referring to. So the file is nice. Well, I'll start with what's not nice about it. Obviously, we have all of this white space around this. But the nice thing about the PDF is it saves in a very, very um, detailed format. So it would allow someone to zoom in. Um, I'll actually have to change this plant, by the way. But it allows someone to have to zoom in or be able to zoom in a lot and get some really good detail out of this plan. You can tell things are crystal clear. Um, if you send this off to a big printer, um, a place locally that you could find to, to print large, uh, this will print really well and really crystal, crystal clear. But if you're sending it to someone via text message, I have found that it's typically not best to send the PDF. Um, just because with a lot of phones it doesn't work so well. So what I do is I zoom in like this. I go to this... Oh. Okay, I zoom in just like this. I go to this little program that's free. It's called Snipping Tool. We click on this, click New, and we will basically click and drag and highlight everything we want to be in a JPEG for an iPhone send. So I will now release and it goes to here and I'll say save as and I'll say Karen JPEG. And this is something that you could text an employee really quick for a reference. This is something you could text a client really quick just to show as a delivery or as a preview. Um, let's hit save and I'll exit out of these and there we go so now this one is cropped really well this is how it will show up on their phone which is nice the only downfall is when you zoom in it's a little more pixelated um, the fence isn't crystal clear the boulder detail isn't there but at least it shows people better on a cell phone what to accomplish so this is what I do um, that's my last tip of the day for this video and your delivery, delivering the 2D plan and the 3D plan. Um, as for the 3D plan, I recommend setting up a free YouTube account under your Gmail and sending people uploading a video and you can make it as unlisted so it's a private video that no one will see except your customers who have the link. Uh, it'll work on any device your customer has and it's nothing they have to download so it usually works out really well. Okay, so what I did want to share with you is that if you go to my website, landscapersacademy.com, uh, I have free resources here for all other landscapers. Um, if you enter in your first name, your phone number, and your email, you can get instant access to this website, and it has tons of free learning access uh, within it. This is the first thing I'd tell you guys to do to help increase your business profits uh, instantaneous. Um, the things I've made in here are other YouTube videos that are only about four or five minutes long, but they're proven to work. And um, I get a lot of good feedback from that from all landscapers and other construction industry um, type of contractors as well. Now, moving up from there, if you go to landscapersacademy.com slash elite coaching or slash coaching, uh, you'll see I have this uh, website set up and this is myself. 
Uh, I wanted to introduce you as another service that I provide as a business coach to your landscaping business. Um, basically what I will do from here is uh, you will receive a, a weekly live coaching call with me to discuss the topic of my choice each and every week. Uh, you get access to the coaching calls each week and you get access to letting me go over your specific questions live and how to solve each and every one of them. Um, basically the call doesn't end unless I have answered every single person's questions and we go through in and out how to solve your problems and work together to make your business streamline into success. Uh, you also get access messaging me and that way you can get any question within your business on a daily basis answered right away. Um, it's the quickest way I know to help get yourself out of a pickle or find little sales cues that you need or have questions when bidding something. I'm your guy. You also get access to my Facebook group with other like-minded landscape owners. And um, that alone is extremely valuable because with others in this group, there's a very slim chance that uh, they haven't gone through whatever you're going through and have a solution for you too. So um, not only is it motivating, but it's one of those things that it once you see and feel all the success of other people, you basically feel unstoppable within your business. Uh, within that Facebook group, you also get all the video libraries of all the previous calls I've made every single week and all the posts that all the members have made within those uh basically last few years of us doing this. So this is your defining moment. If you want to grow your business uh, into a huge success, uh, I would just venture to say you should go to my website and check things out or message me through Instagram and see what you could do, um, see what we could do for your business. I hope to see you in there and I hope this video helped you, hope this tutorial helped you and I hope now you can uh, move forward with making plans like this in your business and wowing customers, making sales, and making more money and freedom in your business. Thank you for watching. We'll see you through other videos.